Hi Floss Tube, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. Uh, this is NBC Stitcher. I'm Matt and this is Augie. And today is going to be a Floss Tube episode number 38. Uh, it is currently Saturday, January 8th, 2022. Um, we are into the first part of 2022 and um, I'm doing my next uh, update on my floss tube. Um, I think I'll probably do a whip parade, but a little bit later. I'm not kind of in the spot to do that right now. So, um, we'll be doing that a little later. Um, but there are, I can definitely tell you, I'm enjoying watching lots of people's whip parades and, um, some of the ones that I just finished are Vicky Stitch and Button, um, I just watched hers a couple days ago. Uh, last weekend I finished up Nithya at uh, Daybreak Stitchery. Uh, she had two parts on hers and um, that was great. And uh, the Sunshine Stitchers just did all three of theirs. They did three separate episodes. It's a couple back now, but those were all in December. Um, there's a lot of people doing whip parades and they're really fun to watch. And um, I love stitching along while I'm watching Floss Tube anyway, but also uh, people doing whip parades. And there's really cool um, hashtag, uh, I think Michelle G started it or she was using it as well. Um, I'm gonna add it down there because I don't remember it. Progress Parade 21-22, something like that. Um, but it'll be down below um, and so I mean, not that you would use it when you're watching this thing, because I'm not doing a whip parade, but other people are doing that and uh, posting like, okay, I worked on this while doing the whip parade. Jessie Marie does stuff. She did that when she did her whip parade uh, back in November, somewhere around there. Um, and I participated in that, uh, or maybe it was October. I don't know, but it was a while ago. Um, you're not wanting to stay up here? Okay. Um, it's an early out for Augie today. Uh, so um, I also want to say thank you to everybody that has liked and commented on my videos and everything. I really appreciate it. Uh, I think um, I know uh, I appreciate the effort and everything. Um, and then I also just appreciate the people that just watch it. And um, I know a lot of people watch it on their TV and it you can't really comment or there, it's a lot more difficult to do it that way and I have done that and then I, I'm like oh I'll go back and then I don't so but I really appreciate everybody um, and uh, commenting on everything on Instagram uh, my Instagram handle is down below as well and um, for an overview I have uh, a little bit of haul compared to last time um, several new starts um, a staff a start and a finish and then um, some progress on quite a bit of things so um, I was kind of thinking oh I won't have much to show and actually I do have a good amount uh, two starts I may have had I've got a bunch of stuff so um, let's go ahead and get on into it uh, first of all let's do uh, oh and I have a couple books so I'll talk about it at the end well just one book at the end um, so, okay, I was, um, at the end of last year, uh, thinking, okay, I want to get, I was looking at my, like, accomplishments for the year, I keep, I know lots of people do different kind of journals and everything, uh, there's like the Happy Planner and all the different things, um, and whatever works for you is great. Uh, I use, like, an, like, a journal like this, um, and I use it for multiple years, and I kind of have different sections in it. You can see the little tabs. Um, but essentially I have like a list of things that I start and then when I finish them, I write that on there. And then I have a page for each individual project where I keep like, I use this fabric. Um, oftentimes I will put like the card, tape it in there. Um, and so, you know, I have kind of my records um, and then I have in the back, I have my goals pages and I set a goal, set my goals for the year and then kind of keep track of them as I'm going through. Well, as I was climbing to the end of 2021, uh, I had 
originally set a higher goal, but I had changed it during the year because of how things were going. But I wanted to get 25 finishes this year. Um, I'd also wanted to get a whip go blackout. Didn't quite make that um, unless I, I didn't get all the letters that I wanted to do. So, but I did everything else and I was very happy with my whip go results and I'm participating again this next year. Um, I also had, I wanted to get a certain number of stitches on my full coverages uh, and that was 16,000 stitches and I accomplished that. Um, I also keep track of like how many finishes I have during the year and I mean you can see, well when I say finish there's an asterisk. I have a definition and it includes other things that maybe people would say oh well, that's, for me it's a finish and that's what matters. So it's actually like when you finish a project that's one. Um, for stitch alongs and things when I finish the part, that counts as that. So my Dark Queen, when I was finishing different parts of her, I counted those. I didn't count her overall as like another big finish, I just counted the parts um, as we did them. Um, and then uh, the individual uh, letters on my big uh, alphabet sampler or um, stitch pain-free crafts, those count as individual ones. Um, and then for bigger projects, I count like a page finish. And some of that is like the actual pages, um, or if I kind of, I don't like to stitch part of a motif. So I will often go beyond the page on one part and then like cut out, you know, okay, I'm not doing that motif because it's more on this other page. And I kind of try to balance that out. So those things count, which actually I didn't include Okay, I actually have some more finishes because I forgot to include the three pages I finished on um, uh, Forest of Sumatra. So that would be additionally. Anyway, um, and then uh, as I finish individual little things. So um, my goal, and then, okay, I have pages on my full coverages. Uh, because I stitch in the diagonal generally and kind of more cross, cross country, um, I don't count that as like a page on there would be a lot more than one page. So what I do is I take the total number of stitches and divide the number of pages in the chart and that gives me like a per page number of stitches, like an average across the, the chart. And so when I reach that on that, that counts as one page finish. And so I talked about that last time because I had finished, or before I had uh, gotten up to a page on uh, Once Upon a Fairy Tale, and I had <coughs> gotten quite a bit on uh, Intimate Encounter, um, but still just one page is on, on both of those. So my goal was to get to 25, and I was at 24. I hadn't recognized Force of Sumatra until just now, so those didn't count. Um, and I was like, well, Initially, I had thought, well, maybe I'll work on letter N and I will get that done and that will count as my 25th. And as it got closer and closer and the last day of the year, New Year's Eve, I was like, eh, that's a lot. I'm not very far. It would take me like all day. We've got things to do. I don't think I'm going to have that kind of time to do that. And I got in uh, as a Christmas gift from... Um, Tracy Horner, um, I showed this last time, this uh, beautiful little freebie, um, Ink Circles Holiday Magic. It's from, she actually did these back in 2012, but she gave them out to her patrons with a nice holiday card, and I really liked it. And I talked about this last time. Um, I did go ahead and, uh-oh, I, um, I'm sorry for the dinging if you're hearing that. It's not on my phone, it's on my lap, my iPad, because it's an iMessage group. Um, people are talking and I don't, Okay, there's some drama going on, I think, with, um,
some brunch plans for tomorrow. You know, it's a thing, if you know. Uh, you know, anyway, uh, God damn it. <sighs> I'm just, there's going to be some dinging and that's going to happen. Anyway, uh, so I stitched it up all on New Year's Eve, um, start and finished it. And I did it on a 40 count, uh, piece of fabric that I received as, um, um, uh, stitchy kindness from, uh, Garrett coffee stitcher. And I used uh, the poinsettia uh, silk from Be Stitch Me that was in the solstice box. And I did, it's 40 count, and so I did one over two. Um, and there we go. So it's a nice little, it was a cute little thing. Um, I, I think I used four lengths. Uh, I mean, a single strand, maybe three. It wasn't that much, but I really enjoyed it. It was fun. Um, and now I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna finish it. Um, kind of looking for like a small little tiny frame or something that would be really fun uh, to use. Um, I've been kind of looking when I go to different places and I just haven't found it yet, but um, I did look at like putting it on one of my canvases, but it's gonna be so much, like it's so big. It's like the fabric will, like it will fit, but it would be like this half of the fabric essentially. And I'm like, that's a little too, that ratio is not quite right for me. So, um, but yeah, that was my little start and finish. So we got my 25th finish for the year, although it's now 28 because I remembered some things. Um, but yes. Uh, okay. So I do have another finish that I had forgotten to show. Um, I'm still in process of FFOing it, so it's not quite completely done and I need to adjust some of it. So, um, this is Stop Asian Hate from, um, Stitches by Dre on Etsy. Uh, this is one of the Prudence Kitsch, uh, pieces, um, just like this one. Uh, I did do a little bit of changing to it. So... The um, black work border is actually a little bit bigger and the words are a little bit further over as they're charted. Um, but I resized it a little bit to make it a little smaller and to make the black work kind of line up on both, on all the way around, make it more symmetrical than the way it was charted, um, just because I liked it a little bit more that way. Um, I used 310 for the black. The red and blue are hand dyed from Rolanda floss that I had. And then the others are some DMC. Um, I think I made her a little bit darker than uh, was called for, but yeah. I really loved this. Um, I believe that it says in Korean, uh, stop Asian hate. So that is my understanding. Um, but, and then I did this, I think it's, well, let's check. I believe it's either an unnamed or it's no. Uh, Will I just wrote thirty-two count Joe Blown by Be Stitch Me. I think it might be Neptune, but I'm not sure. It may not be named. Um. So yeah, it was a Joe Blown. Um, I enjoyed stitching on it and then I'm going to be framing it, uh, but I need to make it a little bit smaller so it fits in the frame a little bit better than uh, it doesn't. Right now when I get it in there, it fits in, but it's so tight that it kind of warps the, the fabric. Um, so we need to adjust it a little bit. Anyway, um, so that those were my two finishes. Um, I have several new starts, so I don't think I showed this, but you can. Um, uh, I just can't show you the pattern because the pattern is just, well, there is a picture, but I printed it in black and white, and so there's no real reason to show you. Um, this is the um, Steel City Stitchers, Stitchers Retreat piece that Liz Matthews designed. Um, so, I did a big, I, I've changed a lot of things. Um, first of all, um, 
I'm doing it in Sulky, the called for was DMC, and I am uh, changed it to Sulky. The only thing I didn't change is I, there's some brown in the, the um, well, even then, uh, the brown in the uh, base of the bridge uh, is, well, I don't know that it was brown in the original. I think it is brown, but I used the anchor version of Espresso, was it 3371? I don't remember. You know, the very dark brown that we use in a lot of stuff. Um, there's a DM, there's an anchor version of that. Um, and I use that because I it was right near me. And so I use that. Um, I am using a peacock looking uh, sulky for most of the border and a lot of things. And that is in the other room. Um, I don't have the number, but if you're interested in what I used, I can send that to you. If you want to send me a message, um, I'd be happy to share. Um, but so the bird and then the border I'm doing in this blue to green kind of peacock looking variegated thread um, that I'm loving. And then I changed the f snowflakes to a little bit more blues. Um, and the flowers, I have a variegated green that I'm using for the leaves instead of two different greens. And then I have two different, a red and a pink that'll go in the flower. Um, and then I'm going to use, uh, let's see, I believe it's a, uh, oh, I'm gonna, I haven't pulled it yet, but I'm gonna use a metallic for the needle. There's a needle that goes here on the bird and then there's like thread and that'll probably be the blue green. Um, well, that might be a little existential because we have the bird that's made of that and then he's holding a needle that he's using. Maybe not that, um, maybe a different color, but um, anyway, so, uh, and then this is on 32 count Lugana that Jody dyed um, from uh, Steel City Stitchers from her Fabric of the Month uh, club. And so if you are going to Pittsburgh, you get the pattern. And then um, if, when we're there, they're gonna give us like some finishing instructions and we can finish it there with them. They're gonna give us some stuff, a, a possible way to finish it uh, and the materials. And then, um, we don't want to do that then we'll uh you can do whatever you want um but yeah so it's, that's weird um what was i gonna say uh um, um i think that's it so um the uh, steel city stitchers retreat is the first weekend in february as of now it's happening hopefully it um things kind of calm down slash burn out, and then uh, that'll be fine. Um, I will probably not be going, doing very much the, uh, you know, the week, or the two weeks before my plan to go because I want to go and I don't want that to be in jeopardy. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, so yeah. Um, I left the, the bridge yellow because that is a, a thing in Pittsburgh from my research. Uh, and then, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, uh, I will probably have this done in the next week or so because that is a, uh, a thing that I'm working on. Um, okay, another new start. Uh, well, no, I had started this, but the... Okay, we'll hold off on that one then. Um, so we, I live in Tulsa. Uh, the local needle shop here is, the cross-stitching one is um, the silver needle. There's also Stitches, I think is the name of it. And they are more, they're a needle point store more, but they also have a lot of fibers and you can get a lot of stuff there too. Um, and I think in the past they used to be more cross stitch, but they, they may be going into that, but that's, I don't know. Um, I heard from somebody, heard from somebody. So this is all hearsay. Uh, okay, so 
Silver Needle does a New Year's Eve sale that they um, have been doing for years and it's like they open at seven and you know they open at six and if you shop if you get there between six and seven you get 25% off um, and then from seven to eight it's like 20 and it kind of goes down uh, the longer it also works online you can place an order online during that time period and you get the the thing um, but Cheryl, my friend, uh, and I were gonna, we went there that morning, and so I got up at like 5.45 to be able to get there. It's not very far from my house, but it was like, I need to be up. Um, and so I got there, I got a bunch of things. I'll show more in haul, but I got two patterns that I ended up starting Christmas Day, or Christmas, New Year's Day. Um, the first is Christmas Eve, which is the, the last of the series from this last year from Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, A Time for All Seasons was the name of that series. And so they did this um, whole thing. Uh, and she's got one this year that's in the woods, um, the fox, and then the second one is the swans. Um, they did not have the fox, um, it had sold out. So I had to, I purchased it somewhere else um, and it hasn't arrived yet, but I thought this looked fun and I really liked this Christmas, this Santa Claus. So I had already purchased the Overdyes and then I got the chart and I had already also purchased the fabric I ended up using and I had purchased it the last time I was at the Silver Needle with Cheryl. Um, so this is a piece of 32 count woodland um, by Picture This Plus. And let's see, I think that'll be fine. So, um, which is a very dark green. So even with a 32, still I have been using the like glasses with the light on them. Um, and then you can change out the magnification. It's some, it's way good. And then like, uh, some white underneath it and it stands out but um, this is my start I've spent a couple days on it um, so you've got like the this deer in his cloak and then this is the bag um, and there's kind of some brown and then I've just done some different things so I really really love this pattern it's going to be beautiful um, I love this color on it uh, it is not what the called for is but it is really gorgeous it's I don't think I'm going to have to change any of the colors. I am deciding if I'm going to keep one of the colors of the trees. They're brown in the called for. Um, and I may do them all white instead of doing some of them white and some of them brown. So that's what it is. Uh, I believe this is Bayberry. Uh, the red. It's the called for. But yeah, I really liked it. So... That is that one. Um, and then the other one I started, I also purchased uh, Polar Pack from Plum Street Samplers. Um, and this is the first time I've stitched a Plum Street. So I have a couple others. I have the Fox Stack and the Rack Stack. Um, so it's a Fox Few or, yeah. Um, but I liked this, these polar bears, this was kind of, I think this winter she released it, um, or at the end of fall or whatever, um, but it was relatively new. And so I picked it up. Um, I did do some difference in the colors that I'm using. So here's my floss. It's not a whole lot because it's not that big, but, um, so I changed the over dyes, all of them. Um, so for the red, I'm using Buckeye Scarlet. I, the called for was much more muted, and so I wanted something that was bright. Um, and then the green, was, which is mostly for the trees, I also wanted something brighter, so I went with Grasshopper. Um, and that's from Classic Color Works. Uh, Buckeye Scarlet is from Gentle Art. Um, then the black is called to use uh, Weeks Dye Works mascara or whatever. I have some black cauldron from Be Stitch Me, which is the silk, and so I'm using that. Um, and then I, there's, uh, um, then there's another white, I think it, 
and I have a silk that I'm gonna use um, from Silks For You. I have a big hank of it. So I decided not to do a project that I had kitted up with some of these, and then I was like, well, I'll just use that. So that'll be the white, and then uh, the others are just the DMC colors. So, um, and then I'm using a piece of 36 count Glacier, which is from V Stitch Me, and it was in the um, Christmas box, that, or sorry, Winter Solstice box. And it goes like this. Um, it's like, that doesn't look quite right. Uh, so I did essentially several lengths of the Buckeye Scarlet. Um, but yeah, it's really pretty. I really love this fabric for it. I think it's gonna look great. Um, I think everything is gonna pop. So even the whites are gonna be fine on that. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be gorgeous, uh, but I only started it and then I'm kind of not planning on, I might come back to it more in this winter, but since it's more winter than Christmas, uh, but yeah. Okay, I don't know that I'll see, you'll see Christmas Eve until like maybe July or something when I'm, wanting to stitch Christmas again. Um, I did do it during some of the 12 days of Christmas, after Christmas, but that's about it. Um, okay, so whips. Um, I am doing the Temperature Library 2 from uh, Christie's Corner on Etsy, uh, Dr. Christie on Instagram. And she, it's a temperature bookshelf. Um, well, that's the title. Uh, so I had been working on getting the uh, bookshelf itself done uh, or parts of it. And so I got a little bit further on that and then I started on the books. Um, there's some little um, items on there. So I stitched the first couple, like they're called for in, um, cross stitch and then I played around with doing some satin stitches and I'm really liking the way it looks like especially for the ends of books so yeah I am really really enjoying this um so the called for pattern is to use like the high of every day and that's like the color that that correlates to a specific DMC color and you use that to stitch your book um for the day I've only done the first five days of the year. Um, and there's like, but I wanted to do something a little bit different because I'm extra. And so I am doing both the high and the low for the day. And the high is the main color. And then the low is kind of like the binding, the highlight or whatever. So like here, this, the pink, very light lavender um, color is the low temperature and then the dark green is the high temperature for that day. I don't remember what it is, I have to look at my chart, but that's essentially the way it is. Um, and yeah, so there are several more days. I am still playing around with the back stitch around it or maybe if there's some way that I can I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more. I'm not entirely happy with back stitching around them. It's not the worst. Well, I mean, it works. I don't like it without something, but I'm not sure what I wanna do. Cause when you satin stitch like that, it's gonna really pull, it really pulls the fabric in. And so like you can really see when you look up to it. Now, when you look far away, it just looks like books. So I don't know, maybe I'll, I'm gonna play around with it some more and but it is, um, I'm like keeping track of it every day, but I'm not stitching on it every day because the way, like, the other thing about doing the low and the high is that I really can't work on it that day because sometimes it will get colder that night than it was that morning. And so I kind of have to wait until midnight has happened and I can actually check the, like, the records. Um, but yeah. Uh, I'm using the color list that uh, Christy did, but I did change mine to five degree increments because I'm doing both those. And living in Oklahoma, I need stuff that goes down to like, 
well, we get negative Fahrenheit at times. Um, but I went with, so it's below 15, which is 14 and below, um, is the lowest color. And then the highest color is above 100. So um, that was what her her uh, list of colors, that was the way it worked. So I'm really enjoying this though and look forward to that this year. Um, let's do this one first. Uh, I also want to talk about this. Uh, so this is Autumn Town by Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is part of, uh, I'm part of the Holiday Hangover Sal, which started last Boxing Day. Um, Kristen uh, of Steel City Stitchers and I started this. Um, and Jody dyed us fabric. And then also Catherine Paper Crane Stitches also started it with us. Several other people have been stitching on it as well. Um, and so we, the, the anniversary, the birthday of the piece came up and I decided to definitely work on it some more after, you know, Christmas. Um, I had worked on this a little in the fall and then, uh, but I'm wanted to get a little more progress and I'm very happy with how it's gone. Um, so I got the giant tree filled in completely. Um, and that is mostly what I did. Uh, I did a little bit more of it up here and some other stuff, but I, my boyfriend and I went up to Kansas to visit some of his friends and some of his very good friends from, he used to teach up there at a school. And so, uh, we went to visit them. I got to meet them and then, um, but we had some car ride time and then, uh, some downtime there just kind of talking and I pulled it out. Um, one of them is also a cross stitcher. So, uh, we enjoyed that and yeah, I just, I love it. This is with the called for floss. So this beautiful tree is Gloriana. Um, and then this is also one of the Glorianas and I just, I love them. Um, I am going to get, I did make a change. There's a thread works I'm going to be using for one of the other trees, but it, I haven't run into it yet, but it will be up here. So I really enjoy this piece and love working on it. And yeah, um, I'm not even a quarter of the way through, maybe a quarter, but like I got a lot to do. So, but it does give me, I've got some good, like, well, I did also fit, fill in this part of this house, but I like, one thing I like about this is there are definitely um, opportunities to make uh, easy fill in here. So like this roof, I know that if I just need something to stitch on and don't really need to pay attention to the pattern, I can fill this in. I have done the outline of it and I have done the few little things that are in it and I can just fill that in and that will be, that'll be great. That's what I did with this tree. I had the outline and I had the branches and I just filled in and it looks great and it's amazing. And I had some, I was like five stitches or something short of being done. And so I had to do another thread and then I came up here and worked on this tree because it was close instead of putting the thread back. Um, it may have been a little more than five, but anyway. Um, so yeah, there's wonderful ways to kind of get blocks of color that you want to have something easy to stitch on. Um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful piece. Very happy with that. Um, and, oh, um, this bag is from Stonework Stitches on Etsy, I believe. Oh, I don't think there's a tag on the inside, is there? There may be on the other one. Um, I found her on Etsy and it's she does several different style of bags. I've shown it before. Um, I love it, it's beautiful. She had some great autumn ones. Um, and so, um, yeah. I'll put a link down below to her piece. Um, okay. So, um, 
Next up, part of my Whip Go goals that came, that were called this year, um, or for January, are five days on Ink Circles projects and five days on fandom. Um, so far, I have spent a couple days on Ink Circles. Uh, and I pulled all of my Ink Circles out and then it's like, oh, this one, I'm, you know, about a little more than halfway through. Why don't I work on this for a little bit? And this is Elemental Dragons Earth. Uh, and uh, yeah, I started this last year. I enjoy it, no, two years ago. Um, and I've been enjoying it. And I got the top half done um, last year. And then I have been working on it more this last week. Um, so essentially I got this big dragon, this thing, and then came down here and did this. So I've got one or three more big dragons and then this kind of thing. And then I got to finish up the trident looking thing over on that end, but yeah. Um, it's coming along really well. I love working on this piece. Um, it is 40 count Verdal, so that's an even weave made by Zweigert, and uh, this was dyed by Be Stitch Me. The colorway is Earth, so that kind of makes sense. And then I'm using um, a floss uh, from Weeks Dye Works called Foliage, and it is one over two full cross. And yeah. So, um, I've done two days of my five and I'm still interested in stitching on this. I, if I continue to do the other three, I may be pretty close to a finish. So I may just keep stitching on this. I might switch something out. I don't know. I'm kind of not sure, but the next time I'm going to, I still want to stitch on this. So, um, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. It's much. So I want to say comparing stitching on 40 count even weave to 40 count linen. Um, the even weave in some ways is harder to see because the, the, the strands are thicker. They are even and they, you know, thus even weave, but, um, so the holes seem a little bit smaller because the strands feel bigger than the linen strands. Um, but I do, um, I like working on both. Uh, and for a light fabric, I like with this, I don't use the magnification headgear thing. Um, but, uh, it also is helpful when I'm not tired and my eyes don't have to look that far. Um, I probably could and it would be easier on them, but, um, yeah, so. And then we have one left. Um, so, uh, I, oh, one of my goals this year is to do 3,000 stitches every month on my full coverages. Um, and I have two going, um, and this, I have, I guess I have a couple others that are like full coverage, but like, I'm not counting them in this. This is like the big ones, the Hades, the stuff, stuff I'm doing two over one in a tent stitch, um, and like on 28 count or similar, that's what they're on, but, um, if you mock up. Okay. So this piece is what I've mostly worked on this. Well, what I've worked on so far. Uh, this year. Um, this is Intimate Encounter by Heaven and Earth Designs, and it is, um, the art is by Sandra Santera, and um, it depicts the god Pan and the god Hearn, or mythical figure Hearn, um, yeah, about to get busy, um, or maybe they have, you can decide, uh, but I loved this piece and I thought that would be really fun to do. Um, so I have been working on it and I'm stitching in a diagonal, a 20 wide diagonal, and I'm really, really enjoying this. So um, I'm planning to continue this diagonal and finish it up or get it pretty close. There's a couple like, oh, there's one color here. I need to do that. And I haven't done that because I just didn't want to spend all that time to do that one stitch. 
but I need to go back and do a few of those, but there's some big chunks here as well of some different colors. Um, but when I finish this diagonal, I'm going to switch back over to my other piece. Um, and then at some point I'm going to be starting a new one, um, which I talked about last time. Um, but I am up to, um, just under or just about halfway to my goal this month. Um, I did stitch some like at the end of last year after I reached my yearly goal and I'm counting that towards this. Um, I'm not like, oh, it's only starting in the new year. Um, or knowing myself, I would have just not worked on it and been like, okay, well, it doesn't count till then. Well, I'm not gonna work on it. Um, so I write the rules, uh, but I'm really enjoying this. It's really fun. Uh, I really love the detail. It's beautiful, big piece. Like you can totally see that is a giant hand. And then there's another hand coming here too on his wrist and yeah. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, I will be working on this quite a bit more this year. Um, and I'm just at 4% now. So, woohoo! Uh, it's got a lot to go, but it's actually pretty easy to work on. Um, this one especially is less confetti than the Once Upon a Fairy Tale. It's a lot bigger picture in, you know, versus more detail. And so the colors don't change as much. Um, and that's what helps it be a little bit quicker to do. Um, I am generally working on these on Fridays and then I'll probably do more than just on Friday, but um, I stitch in virtual stitchers, uh, especially on Friday nights and Vicky Stitch and Button and I um, are trying to figure out ways to do a little bit more on our full coverages this year and we both committed to each other not part of like a challenge group or anything that we were going to do full coverage Fridays. Now it's not like that's the only thing you can do or whatever, but, um, I'm trying to use Fridays for that. Um, and so like last night I got 500 stitches in on it, um, on that piece. And so I got quite a bit of progress. Um, and I will probably work on it some today because it's, I am really enjoying it. And so, I'm gonna keep working on it. Um, so that's all the stitching, actual stitching stuff. I have some haul. Um, aside from what I've already shown you at the New Year's Eve sale, I got a few other things. Um, I had been eyeing this for a while and I was like, well, 25% off, this is a good time. Let's go ahead and do it. Um, and so this is the DMC book. This is the one where it has the actual thread in it. So you can see it's got like actual thread, not just the color card. Um, it is more expensive than the color card, but it is, I, I think you get like, it's different seeing this than actually, you know, what they print on the card. Um, and so I picked this up as like, yeah, I do. That's something I need. Um, it would be useful to have. And so I'm very happy for that. Um, you saw the other two patterns. Oh, darn. They're in the other room. I took it to scan it in at work, and so it's in my bag. Um, oh, and the other one is too. Uh, okay, I'll have to... Um, hold, please. up the oh what's his name um we have a big scanner at work so I was use I took it to scan it in so I could make a pdf or a working copy of it um okay winter white santa by Mirabilia I have enjoyed this piece seen it looks really good and I would like at some point to have a big santa to put up you know, for Christmas. And so 
I figured he would be really fun to do. I like him a lot. And so he was on sale. So I got him because um, everything was on sale. And uh, the other thing, I've been eyeing this for a while and I've seen lots of people that have done them and they're really pretty. The Rosewood Manor um, Seasonal Quaker series is really beautiful. I really love the autumn one and so I'm starting with autumn. So I purchased Autumn Quaker and this is the piece. Um, I also got the, uh, oh, two of them fell out. But the thread pack, which is Valdani silks and their three ply. That's the, the little thread pack. Um, yeah, and then I got some fabric as well. Actually, my friend Cheryl, for Christmas, um, got me this. And so this is the doubloon fabric, which is the called for. And yeah, it's really pretty. Now I did get it in a little bit higher count because I think it calls for in 28. And so I got it in 36 because I like, I don't like 28 as much. Um, but yeah, so this is what I got. But it's a really pretty color. I really love it. Um, I haven't, and that's from Picture This Plus. So they had, I don't know if they had all of them, but they had several of the different seasonal Quakers with the thread packs. And then they also had fabric for several of them. Um, if not all of them, I didn't look for all of them. Uh, and so that will be doing, I believe, and Cheryl already had the fabric. No, she got fabric, but she already had the pattern. I think the floss, but she is going to be starting it this year, part of her birthday celebration. And so I think I'm going to start with her. So it's getting kitted up and another project bag by uh, Stonehouse Stitchworks, I think. Uh, sorry. Um, her name is escaping me, but I'll put it down below uh, in the description box. So she has like the vinyl fronts and then these that are like, uh, you know, fabric, but then it's like you know, plain black on the back. I really like, for me, I like the vinyl fronts, but I also like them big enough that I can fit an 11 by 11 in. And that's more important to me than like, oh, I see exactly what it is. If I know what's in there, I know what's in there. And then, you know, anyway, so that was the last of what I got at Chris at New Year's Eve. Um, I got some of, oh, I also purchased some Krynik, no, Petite Treasure Braid for some different projects. I had a list and I've put that back away. Um, so, cause it's just like, oh, I needed this color. I needed that color. And so that's fine. Um, I've received some of my fabric at, and of the month stuff for, it was for December um, of my last of the Fortnite fabrics, fabric of the months um, for now. And this is Lucy and Ricky, which was their duo, color duo series that they did last year. Um, and I was getting it on a 32 count Lugana. So that's what I got. It's a really pretty purple and gray combination. I really like that. So yeah. Um, they have, I think, four different lines this year, maybe three, um, but you can go check them out. Oh, I forgot. Cheryl also got me for Christmas this beautiful, uh, scissor fob that she made and it has an owl at the bottom because, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and blue and I really, really like it. Uh, okay. I got my um, Be Stitch Me Fabric of the Month from this last year, uh, from December, and I get the 32 count neutral, I get the neutral colorway and 32 count Joblin. Um, and it was lunar, and it's this beautiful gray, purpley, but like very, it's a beautiful color of the moon. And it's slight modeling, it would be, it's perfect for something that you need like not a lot of action happening on. 
you know what I mean. But yeah, it's pretty. I really love that. Um, um, and then the other one is called It's a Mystery, and it, I get it, this is the colorful one, um, and it was 36 count linen is what I get in that. And this is, oh, so good too. Gray, teal, purple, charcoal -y beautifulness. It's amazing. I love it. So, uh, and then I joined her Silk of the Month Club, which for this next year she's doing, you can get, um, so it's 50 yards, but you will either get like five 10 yard skeins or you'll get two 25 yard skeins that are variegated colors. Um, the 10 yard skeins, you get like, it's kind of, well, that's, so you get variegated and non-variegated in the 10 yards gains, or at least the way it was. She's added the, the just variegated option, and then you can either get two 25 yards gains of the variegated ones, or you can do two 50 yards gains, but then it's twice as much. Um, but yeah, so... I, uh, and this, that's starting for this next year. So this one was mystery. It's a beautiful purple, plummy purple jade, just a really gray, lightly green kelp, which is a gray green subtle variegation to it. Um, florette, which is a purple gray. And then Huckleberry, which is also a purple gray, but it's a nice little, you can totally do something with this. If you have, you know, a pattern that you need just some colors, um, or you need to like, you're redoing colors. These would be pr great to do that. Um, I have been getting her stuff mostly in the boxes, uh, the, you know, the solstice boxes or the different things. And so. I wanted to get a little bit more because I would like to do that, um, do some more stuff with them. Um, after I stitched with it really for the first time in poinsettia and that was on the, the um, ink circles piece. It was really nice. So um, I also have received yesterday, I got my January fabric of the month from Jody at the, at the uh, Steel City Stitchers. And so these are, this month I got 36 count linen, um, and so, yeah, this is a wonderful, like, crazy colorway, but I just, yeah, you could do something really pretty on that. Um, you know, I'm thinking something like, you know, white or light blue or something that was like solid color piece or something. That would be really fun. Um, or even like an orange or something you're maybe doing like a Halloween piece. It's kind of got the orange background, but if you did like a bright or like a dark orange maybe, or yeah, that's really pretty. Um, it seems darker than what it's looking on the picture. Uh, and then this is a beautiful light green as well. It's more green in person. Um, it's coming, it's kind of washed out, I think, but I wonder that's a little better but yeah it's a little more green uh yeah and so hers is um I think there's a wait list but you can email her to get that pardon um and it is, you get two eighths versus a fat quarter. So, Augie, come here, Augie. Um, okay, that's pretty much it. Um, the only other thing I have to talk about one book, which I don't have a picture of. Um, the only, well, the book series that I talked about last time. Oh, before we do that, I had talked about a giveaway last time. I am waiting a little bit longer. 
um, to draw names for that. So um, it was in relation to the two, um, uh, the two options I have for my next full coverage. Um, go back to my last video, episode 37, and um, you can watch that part. And then uh, if you want to enter, you can put your, you can add a comment and um, which one you would like. I'm going to give away one uh, needle minder for each of them. And so that's just, uh, but I'm going to extend a little bit longer because uh, with the holidays and everything, I wanted to wait a little bit longer. Um, and yeah, help me make that decision because I'm still, I'm pretty sure which way I want to go, but I'm also kind of like, I'm not starting it right now. So maybe things will change. Um, and then last video, I also talked about now back into media things, non-stitchy stuff. Um, so we have, uh, I finished the series, uh, I guess it's October Day is the name of the series, um, which is by Sean and McGuire. Well, to what's out, there's gonna be more in the future, um, but the most recent book I was, hadn't finished it the last time I did my video, but I have finished it since then. And it's a wonderful series. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's an urban fantasy series, mostly set around the Fae. Um, it's kind of like Fae exclusive, like the Fae exist and other kinds of magic or other things are like, no, that doesn't, they're all either, they are Fae too, or it just, it doesn't exist in this world, which is fine. Um, and you know, it, it's enjoyable. Um, and yeah, I really, I thought it was a great book. Oh, excuse me. Um, and I'm excited for future installments in the series. Um, now, after that, I was kind of like, well, what do I want to read now? Um, and I played around with a new book from, uh, Brandon Sanderson, uh, in his Cytonic series, um, I believe this one is called Cytonic, um, which is the third book in this series. Uh, there are also several novellas that have come out in audio form, uh, both before that book came out and after. And so those, I, um, I started to listen to the new book, uh, and realized I don't remember what's really happening. So I, I stopped because I need to kind of either do find a refresher on what's happening or do the last book and then kind of, you know, get to where I am. Um, and so instead I went to a book that I had started recently as well, which is called, uh, the song of Achilles. Um, and it is, well, I'll try to pull it up. Um, uh, the, um, so the Song of Achilles is, um, it is the story of, uh, Achilles told from the point of view of Patroclus, who was, uh, and this is from the Iliad, the Homeric, uh, um, uh, epic poem, um, and Patroclus is his, uh, well, okay. So in the original, well, the Iliad and the Odyssey are Homeric epic poems. They were originally oral poems. And so they weren't written down till much later. And, um, they tell story, they, they tell the story of events that happened several hundred years before they were even recorded or were really told in the form that they were. And so there's a lot of stuff that happens over that time period. Um, and a lot of like things that happen and it's, is it really history? Is it myth? Whatever it is. Anyway, it's a foundational literature for Western Greek civilization. Uh, and a lot of Western uh, culture kind of comes out of that and different things. I was a classics major in college. Um, and so there's a lot to it, but were Achilles and Patroclus boning? Probably. Um, 
I mean, there's a there's no like direct references to it in most of the versions of the Iliad, but a lot of other Greek historians were like, yeah, they were. Um, they were best friends. They had the same tent. They did a lot of stuff. Yeah, and so this is told from the story of it's a love story between Patroclus and Achilles, and kind of what is happening during the Trojan War and the the things that go into it and. You know, Achilles' mother is a character, and she's really, mm, she's a horrible person. Well, she's a goddess, but she is really bad. And I think the most, um, she's not bad, but she's just like, it's like the, the version of the Greek gods that they are certainly fallible, and although they may be immortal, they do really stupid things and don't really think about it. Um, and so that's happened. Um, and so uh, Madeline Miller is the name of the author. Um, and I'll show you a picture of the book. Just hold on. She also more recently wrote Circe, which is another kind of like retelling of a classic myth. Um, Circe is most notably appears in the Odyssey, which follows the Iliad. Um, and I haven't read that yet, but I've heard good things about it as well. Um, so this is told from Patroclus's point of view, from when he is a child um, to when he gets to be in... Uh, Thaya, which is where Achilles is from, uh, he's the prince there, and like their relationship and how it grows and over a period of time and everything, and then um, all the way through the Trojan War, um, and then the death of, Pro spoiler alert, um, they both die, uh, Patroclus, and then even the death of Achilles, and then beyond that, um, and it, it's just, it's a, I enjoyed it. It's very well done. Um, and I, I had a good time. It was not the easiest thing for me to get into. Not necessarily, I don't know that there was anything wrong with it or like, oh, that's not accurate. I liked a lot of it. And the way, um, I think it was just more, I was kind of coming from just reading some urban fantasy and then this is like a very different, very different genre, um, just cause it's like a myth and the things. And it's like, you guys are doing stupid things. <laughs> like the way just, but it's also like, I know this story because I have read this story and I have, um, you know, like, like I know, I know what's going to happen. I know this, how this is going to happen. And I know this stuff. Um, and so it was, it was a very good version of it. I'm not going to say it wasn't, um, but I was not like, I'm not saying like, oh, everybody should read this. Now, if you don't know the Iliad or you don't know uh, this and you want something that it, it's, it's also a very good love story between the two of them. And even like the way their relationship is treated by other people. Um, I don't know how historically accurate it would have been. There's a lot of, we don't know on that. Um, yes, homosexuality existed in the Greek society at different time periods and in different ways, but like, or was not like, I mean, it existed, it's always existed, but like it was, socially acceptable in different forms and different aspects uh, and different ways, but that's much later in time period than what's happening in the Trojan War. But there's also stories of relationships between the gods and people of the same gender um, and just, like, I guess what I'm trying to say. So, there's an evolution of uh, Achilles' mother towards Patroclus. 
she doesn't like him at all at first. The reason is not really clear. And it's not like, oh, you're the one that corrupted my son or something like that. I don't think that's it. Like, or it's not clear that that's what it is. And if it is, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So, but then she evolves her feelings at the end. And that is, that was really nice to see. I, I really enjoyed the ending. Um, how we got there was not always my, like, I was not captivated all the way through. I guess that's the way I'm saying. Um, I really enjoyed the ending. It really was uh, it was done well. Um, it's really beautifully written. Um, and I really enjoyed the story, but, um, I wasn't like, it wasn't a page turner for me. I was like, oh, I need to find out what happens next. It was kind of like, oh yeah, I should listen to my book. Um, and I did finish it this week, but I was also kind of like, I want to finish it, but not because I want to read it, but because I want to be finished with it at times. That was very rambly, but that's where I'm at. Um, and so that's the only additional book that I finished that is not like something new. Um, but yeah, Song of Achilles, I enjoyed it. Um, I would try Circe. Um, I haven't purchased it yet, but I will try that at some point, I think. Um, I liked her style. Um, and Circe is also an interesting character. Uh, and so I would like to see where, what happens in that one, but that's pretty much it. Um, the wheel of time had already ended the last time I did my video. So, um, yeah, that's on, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race is starting up. Uh, the new episode came out yesterday. Um, I've not watched it yet, but I will be watching it today. So, yeah. Um, so I hope you all have a good time, enjoy your stitching, and I will uh, see you in about two weeks. And if you would like to be entered into a giveaway for one of my agate needle minders, go back to the last video and watch that and um, comment on it there. But anyway, have a good, uh, happy new year and have been a very enjoyable 2022. And I will see you next time. Bye.